very important if you have celiac disease or you're gluten or wheat intolerant. With gluten-free cooking, things are definitely changing. The Subway rolls, there's white loaves, there's brown loaves, there's all sorts of very, very good products around. The two dishes I'm going to cook today, one is a twist on a Welsh rabbit, then we're moving on to a tea cake, which we're going to lightly toast, uh, a little lemon Bramley apple compote, and that's it really, very simple food. So, first thing to do is, cream cheese is in a bowl. To that I'm going to add finely grated cheddar cheese. Then I'm going to add to that pepper, a little bit of salt into there. Don't, don't go mad on the salt. We've got four or five of these little beauties. They will give you a nice sort of spicy crunch. And you get that beautiful colour as well. Just mix that up. I'm going to put a teaspoon and a half of mustard into there. And to that I'm going to add two egg yolks. Not only will it give it a binding texture, but it'll also give it a beautiful glaze. Mix, mix, mix. Onto there. This is the brown bread, so I'll let that up. Four slices on there, and then what you need to do is toast them on one side. It keeps the other side soft, so when you put the um, topping on, it will not burn. We'll just pop that under the grill. And give that a couple minutes to brown up nicely. Toast is ready. There we are. Quite a lot of the cheese mixture. So four of those, and we're just going to spread that out to the edge like that. If you don't cover the edge, what happens is that will burn when it glazes up. Slide these back under. I'm going to grill them on a medium heat and it should glaze up beautifully. That is how they come out. Look at that, beautifully glazed. Nice and soft still. Look what that lovely juice is going to run out. And then I'm going to put on there a little bit of spinach. But all we need are the poached eggs to go on top. A soft poached egg. A little bit of pepper. And if you want a little touch of salt, but don't go mad. Just a little bit on there to season the egg. And with my sharp knife, I'll just break that open and you'll see. <gasps> Look at that. And there it is. Pepper rabbit toasts. Right, next we're making a caramel Bramley apple tea cake. First thing you need to do is to take the apples, chop them up, and then into a saucepan. Sugar, that goes on. Grated zest of the whole lemon. Then with a fork, we'll just put the juice into there as well. A touch of water on the stove. That is going to take roughly about 10 minutes, depending on the size of the apple, how much moisture you put into there. But while that's happening, put the sugar into the pan like that. Just enough water to put on top of there, so it just covers the sugar. Nice high gas, get that to the boil. Once that's boiling, it needs to reduce for around about 10 minutes, and it will go to a beautiful caramel colour. The caramel is coming up beautifully now. Look at that, beautiful dark colour. It's actually quite hot at this point, so be very careful. Toss in the pecan nuts, and just stir those about. I'm adding 50 ml of water. Stand back at this point. That is your syrup. Back on the stove and leave it to cool. Now we'll just open up the tea cakes. I'll cut those in half, two halves. Once they're done, there we are. The apple's now ready, beautifully pulpy. We'll put a little bit of them on top. Finally, as you know, this sauce is now thick and slight because it's cooled. A little touch of cream in there. This is purely optional. It just makes the sauce nice and velvety, what we call a cafe au lait sauce. And just takes that rawness out of the caramel. And literally, spoon that over. A few nuts. It's a very simple dish. You can make it day before. The caramel sauce will keep for three weeks in the fridge. It's as simple as that. Everything I've shown you is simple, easy to do, and delicious. It just means that you can have a gluten-free diet and eat great, tasty food. It's not a problem anymore.